Hey there, welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton and I'm here with Cadence. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're gonna make some portraits, thus the title of the event. We got a horn going on. We got all kinds of stuff happening here. Let me know as usual about the audio and stuff here. You know, Seth has abandoned me. That's all right though. We'll get him back eventually. <laughs> He's been very busy doing all kinds of cool stuff. So hopefully you guys are following Seth as well. Anyways, uh, we're going to talk portraits today. Kind of like best practices in a certain way because people often ask like, what makes a good portrait? What, you know, lighting, lens, composition, you know, all the little things we talk about. But to air would be a little bit more kind of uh, is a word. I don't want to say systematic. That's not the right word. Ho ho holistic. holistic. We're going to be holistic about it today. And we're going to talk about kind of the idea of just making it. Now, obviously, if you, if you don't know this, I've worked with Cadence before. <laughs> Many times. times. Actually, I found, I think the very first time we ever shot together recently, I was going through my... Uh, uh, my archives and I found a Polaroid and, and it's very old. So I'll have to send it to you. Yeah, it's very, oh God. yes, it's, it's, there's been a lot of hairstyles. I'll just Lots say that. So, I mean, not that old. We're very young, but you know, the, you, you get the idea. <laughs> Anyways, so it's not exactly the same because usually people will say one of two things. Well, my family, it's, you know, it's awkward, you know, cause they don't want to sit because they're doing family things and I'm trying to attack them with my camera or they're a stranger, how do I break the ice? So we'll talk a little bit about some stuff there um, and we'll kind of go into some lighting and other things too, because we're at it. And I'll just talk to you about my way of doing it. I'm quite sure that you have your own way and I'm sure you won't be shy about telling me. So go ahead and do that in the chat. I will check to make sure that the sound is good because I might've been saying nothing all this time. I might be peeking, it looks like I'm red. How's the sound? Sounding good. Marilyn, I may have said this before, I'll tell my Maryland story in a second. It's a terrible Maryland story. <laughs> I mean, Maryland's wonderful, but it was a terrible Maryland story. Oh, so I think I did the same thing last time. You have to go like this, and then like that, and then like that. Oh, there we go. Oh, and then save. I think I did it right. Okay, anyways. I was... <laughs> This is years ago. I'm living in Miami Beach, as it would be, and I'm driving home and I need to get off the highway. I think I needed gas or I needed a, a drink or something. And not an alcoholic drink, obviously I was driving. But you know, I see this exit and it's in Maryland. It's like, you know, whatever, gas, whatever. And I pull off and there's nothing. It's like, if you ever get off the highway in Connecticut, you've been in Connecticut. It's like, you get off the highway in Connecticut, it's like, where is everything? Like there's just roads, like you gotta drive. I'm driving and driving and driving. It took me like eight miles to get to the thing. So uh, apparently Maryland's not as small as I thought it was. So that's my Maryland story. It's not very good, but I guess they're bigger than Rhode Island. It's a story nonetheless. It wasn't very good, but at least it was short to make up for it. All right, so let's get over here and do this. I'm gonna click on this. All right, so here we go. I'm trying this a little different. <laughs> There's an above average level of background noise. Oh, well, that's probably the that's probably the air conditioner. It is 93 degrees in New York City today. 93 degrees in New York City is, is not like 93 degrees when you're like on the beach. It's, no. <laughs> yes, it's a lot. So i sorry about the background noise. But that's what that, that probably is. Okay, otherwise, fan near the mic. Yep, that's it. Ah, uh, there we go. Audio's fine. So I, I appreciate, uh, uh, I'm sorry I should say about this, the, the thing, but as long as I'm loud enough, I'll, I can turn myself down a little bit if it's bothering you. See if that's better. I can still, I can still see it though. You're not gonna get rid of that without me turning the air conditioner off and I, if I do that, I will pass out because I am old and feeble. So, here we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna kinda, and I joke about this a lot, I'm gonna kinda talk about the things that people say Oh, this is this would be like a good, good like clickbaity video title. So we should, do, you know, the things that people say that, that just aren't true. So, okay, so let, let's talk about a few things. And, and again, I've done all these in individ, as individual videos, but let's talk about how they work with portraits. What lens are we going to use for a portrait, right, is really a question to, to think. And really what it comes down to is where do you want to stand? 
And you have to understand, you don't even need a camera to do this. Get a mirror. If you stand closer to the mirror, you, your, your uh, face and stuff will be elongated. It's just the nature of being close to it. It's a reflection. If you stand back further, it'll be more compressed. People hate the word compressed. That one person's in the comments right now. That's basically what you're doing here. It doesn't really matter the lens. It's just that in order to compose something correctly, like if I'm this close to Cadence, I can't use a 300 millimeter lens on a full frame camera because I'll just get her eyelash on the shot. So we have to pick lenses that work for where we want to stand. I like to be a little bit closer because I think it's easier when you're interacting with somebody and I think that's really important. To me, that's an important part of portrait photography is being able to interact. So some people say, the book from 1975, that you should be like six or eight feet away. I think that's pretty far. This is like four feet away. Like that's pretty far. That's about six or eight feet away. Now you might say, well, that's great because it compresses and stuff, but if I'm dealing with somebody who isn't a professional model, isn't used to being in front of the camera, I don't know them, they're in the studio for a first time, there's a lot of lights everywhere, now I'm putting them in this island yeah. where they're not going to be comfortable, right? So when I'm doing portraits, especially of, I'm gonna use that word, real people, I like to be close. So that means that I'm generally gonna set my portrait lens somewhere between 50 and 85, depending on the, how I actually wanna crop the shot. So we'll just go 85 right now. You could go longer. I mean, there's beautiful long lenses that obviously are very useful. Now, lenses are also way better than they used to be. So the idea of like using something like a 35 for a portrait is totally fine and very common. In fact, I'm pretty sure we just recently did a video about that. Now, once we establish this, this is important, right? Now we can start thinking about like, how are we gonna light them? What do we want to see? It really depends on where you are. I mean, we're in a studio, so we're just gonna deal with what's in here. If you're in an environment, then you have to think about what's there, right? The light that's in there, do I want to use it? Where do, what, what represents the person on some level? Because there's different types of portraits, right? There's the, I'm gonna, everybody has to have the exact same corporate portrait for the annual report portrait. There's the, this tells something about the person portrait. And then there's like the, I want to create something, so I'm gonna make a portrait of somebody that maybe isn't exactly representative of them, but it's about of how I think of them. That's very like Avedon style. You know, Avedon would often say that his portraits were actually portraits of himself. So there you go. I mean, and sometimes literally. So. <laughs> so all that being said, what we want to do is we want to think about how we want to compose the shot and what we want the light to look like, because right, the light's really going to determine everything. If we light the subject in a very dramatic way, then it's going to limit their movement. It's going to look, need, require very specific expression to work. And it's going to be awesome if you do it right. But can fail really bad. If we go with flatter light or more kind of neutral light, we might lose some effect, but it's safer. So if you have an inexperienced person that, you know, that is tendency to not stay in one space or isn't super comfortable, getting them with the most dramatic light to start with is probably not the best bet. So at that, with that being said, Connecticut, hey, hey, so you know about those roads. 50, 57, well, that's cold. Well, nice, actually, 93 degrees, wow. <laughs> yes, it's 93, it's 93 in, in Fahrenheit. I do not know how hot it is in Celsius. It's definitely not 93 in Celsius because I would not be alive. I know that much. Okay, it's early. We're gonna use two different lights today. I think I put that way they can see it. Okay, I'm using these two lights. I was, <laughs> these are Parasnap. I've been talking about these lately because I, I picked up a bunch from Adorama. They were like, hey, use these Parasnaps. And I was like, oh, okay. And they're pretty awesome. This right here is a 40 inch square. So that's some number of centimeters. 80, no, 70, 64 and a half centimeters. <laughs> no, probably like 90 centimeters. Somebody will do the conversion for me. <laughs> yes. And I have a grid on it. And one thing I like about this is that it's shallow. Because I know that sometimes people talk about the idea that, I'm taking a side, little side trip here. Some people talk about like, I have a small space, I can't use a big light. But this is very convenient because it's very uh, shallow. So if you need something for a small space, it might be useful. Okay. 
Friday morning in New Zealand. All right. So let's get to it. I've, at this point, if Seth were here, he'd be freaking out that we hadn't taken a picture yet. So let's get to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with very traditional lighting. And I'm going to show you how to kind of get it quick and easy, that versatile light, and then we'll get more in depth and do something a little bit more with personality, if you will. You know, let me know, ask questions, make comments and such, and we'll kind of move in that direction. So I'm going to start off. So I, I said I put the grid on there because the grid makes everything cooler. So what, what a grid does is it narrows the throw of the light. It also adds a bit of contrast. So if we're going for like kind of a more overarching good light for everybody, we're not going to use this right away. So I'm going to take it off. Now, cool people, just leave it hanging there. If you want to be cool, leave it. Like, just that. And not like perfectly across, like kind of half hanging off. Like you don't care. <laughs> Actually, it's making it so it won't stay straight. Okay, so let me put it straight on the middle. So we leave it there. It looks like something extra. If people ask about it, be like, oh, that adds to the, you know, the inverse square, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, so what we want to do is we want to take our light source, and because we want a light to be uh, soft, we want it to be close and big, right? But the closer the light is to our subject, the quicker the fall off will be, which means we'll get more sudden shadows. So if we want a kind of a versatile uh, portrait light that's going to be useful and kind of anybody can sit in, we're not going to want to put it super close, but we are going to want it to be relatively large. This is why a lot of times you'll see I use that little softbox and I put it in close because I'm doing more structured stuff. This is kind of a more generic shot. So we'll bring it in. This might be obvious, but we're going to put it in front of her because <laughs> we want a lighter face. I'm going to take this off. Cool? I'm not going to be cool anymore. <laughs> All right. Because I've noticed something that, uh, that I mean, it's probably in 99% of the times using this thing, you'll never have a problem. And it's actually kind of useful. But I've noticed that this does not seem to lock. So it's, it's drooping when I leave that on there. That's why I took it off. Some softbox speed rings lock so they won't spin. All right. And some softbox rings don't spin at all, which is worse. And when we're going to place our softbox for a portrait, or really for just about anything, unless you're going for something really spooky, we're going to put the, the center of the light above their eye line. You know, how far above? It kind of depends on how close the light is to them. But let's say top of the head is probably a good place to start at like an, a normal distance. And a good idea with a light modifier is to put it, at least start, roughly the size of the modifier away from the person. That will make it soft, but not super dramatic fall off. So this is 40 inches, 93 and a half centimeters. So that's how far away it is. Somebody hasn't given me the math yet, so I'm gonna keep just making up new centimeters until, <laughs> until we get it right. Well, that can't be right. Because isn't a meter like a yard? Hold on, it's gotta be more than 93. It's gotta be like 100 and something. All right, I went to school in the 80s. We, we didn't learn that stuff. We still didn't learn that when I went to school. They still don't learn it, okay. All right. I'm going to turn the light on. We're, we're in America. That's right. We don't use that kind of stuff. We like to work for our math. <laughs> okay, so I'm in TTL. TTL is through the lens metering. That's going to allow me to set my exposure where I want it to be. No Seth, no sandbags, exactly. Seth is, uh, you're right. So that's a good, good question or comment. People, you know, when do you use a sandbag? Let's actually have a quick little side, I like these sidebars. You want to put a sandbag on a light if the light is, has potential to tip over because it's being boomed out. This light is not, so I'm not going to bother with it. If I put a sandbag on this, I'm just going to make it harder for me to move it around. So I'm just going to leave it like this. If I start booming it out, then we'll definitely put a sandbag on it. So fear not, I would not. I don't think I've ever dropped a light on Cadence. I may have. No. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely dropped lights on people before. You've not dropped one on Cadence. Never one on Cadence. So there you go. First time for everything, I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and in any case, it is a soft box, so it's soft. It won't matter. So we have our light, and we can see, again, the center of it is not above our eye line. So we're going to 
Raise that up. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's about the distance of the softbox away from her. It's above the eye line. I put it to the front close to the lens, right? So not directly over the lens, but close. So we have some direction to it, but not, uh, not too much. All right, let's do a test shot and we'll kind of move forward. You are welcome for the clarification. It's okay, you can warn me about sandbags. I do forget about things. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna make a shot here and I'm gonna put it on here so we can see what it looks like. Again, T oh, see I almost forgot because I've been side, uh, side barred a lot, sidetracked. Um, first thing we wanna do is we want to set our camera so that none of the light in the space affects our shot. I actually did it before we started streaming, that's why I didn't think to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my camera at its fastest, fastest shutter speed within its normal range that can sync with the flash, in other words. The lowest ISO within its normal range, 100 in this case. And then I'm gonna set my aperture close down enough to get rid of all the light in the space, which because all the light's coming through the window is about F8 in here right now. So if we take a shot, we can see that we've got a black frame. And if you want to extra check that, I'm in capture one, by the way, and we can see how far over it is over here, but we can just grab our exposure slider. We want to be two to three stops under. So when we start seeing ca detail and cadence, like right around there, that's 2.2, so two and a quarter under, that's good enough. And that should give us a uh, fine expo uh, exposure with our light without any of the in light in the space affecting us. All right, so now we're going to make a TTL shot. It's a very simple shot. Okay, just to check our exposure. And there you go, done. All right, next week. <laughs> no, so we can see just, just with one light, this is a very, very gentle. Now, I also forgot too, I've been using these parasnaps and they're very cool compared to my other lights. So I'm actually going to raise my Kelvin up to 55, I think is where I like it. Oops, with this. With my pro photo and my Shamira stuff, I like my camera set at 5,000. Now, and I say I like because it's a portrait. I just want it to look good. I don't need it to be exactly 100% accurate color-wise. I mean, obviously it would be nice if it was, but it doesn't have to be. I would much rather have our skin tone look maybe a little bit on the warmer side uh, than normal, depending on your subject, obviously, than have it be the other way. So I will tend towards that way. If you need exact color, we've talked about color charts and stuff before. Oh yeah, the power step is great. It's, <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I, I, I hate to, and people, long term, long time people will be shocked because I am the first one to like, be like, oh really, a new thing that the store is making or Adorn is making, but these are great. That, the, 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 it opens really easy. Cause I often think like, why do we need fast open things? You know, do they really work well? And, and this does. So I do recommend them if you, if you want that. Um, I think I did it last week. I opened and closed. I did, yeah, I, I, I'm re it's fun. What can I say? There you go. Well, I should see if I can get some advertising money from them. Adorama. All right, anyways. Oh, I'm on their channel. Forget it. <laughs> Sorry, so here we go. This is nice and simple. Now, again, if you're trying to make a quick portrait of somebody and you feel like they're not going to have time to sit around, this, you don't have to go much further than this. Basically, a large-ish source close to the camera, but not right over top of it, relative, you know, the size of the light source distance to them will give us a nice, clean light. I don't know why I'm showing myself and not you. You know, this isn't bad, it's clean, right? If we get a good expression, we'd be done. So if you have to make quick portraits, now notice the background's gray because there's enough light hitting the background. So it worked, right? But this is like a step one level thing. Oop. There's a neighborhood alert at my house. Hold on, I forgot to mute my, do not disturb. Okay, I wish we had to do that. All right, so nobody's gonna disturb me now. If we wanna light the background, obviously we can. In these demos, I try not to worry too much about that because it really depends on where you are, right? Sometimes you want background, sometimes you don't want background. So for now, gray's fine. But Cadence does have dark hair and I like for anybody really, but definitely with somebody because we're gonna add a grid later. I like to use a hair light. Hair lights are that thing that is kind of old fashioned, but actually still works pretty well. 
you know, I think for a while people, when it moved away from it, because it was like, oh, hair lights. But the thing is, is that every movie in the world, no matter if it makes sense or not, is always backlit because there's a reason why it adds three dimensionality. She looks fine in this photo. We want her to pop. And in order to pop, we got to give her some separation. So the hair light or separation light in this case, we can call it, I'm going to use here is a strip box, also a Paris snap. I feel like when I say it, I should be like Paris snap. I'm going to try to add that. Should I do two snaps? Okay. I'm going to try that. Whenever I say para snap at home, guys, make sure you snap your fingers. I think I may have called it para pop earlier in the video that I was making because I think para pop is also a thing. But I'm not sure if that's like an older version or from a different company. So these are para snap. Okay. All right. Anyways, this is my second light. It is in a 12 by 36 inch strip box. Also, uh, para snap. And the reason why I'm using them both from the same company is because I have two. But remember, I just changed my white balance. If I took my Profoto strip box and put it on here, it would be warm. And we've had that situation happen before. So I busted this one out. Okay. It's, uh, this is one of the reasons why sometimes it's good to stay within a brand. Okay, so when we're doing a hair light, let me show you guys. I'm going to use the, uh, I'll use the other camera. I use this, I have to use this camera like once into my contract. Well, Parapop is also, it's a much smaller set of modifiers for speed light use. Thank you. The president is calling for a new portrait. Did you, <laughs> Marissa? <laughs> no, actually, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I messed up. See, my brain's going. Sharina, rather. We did a whole thing where we shot in the presidential, the Oval Office. A look back on the channel. It wasn't really the Oval Office. It was a set. And we shot her like the president. Sorry, Sharina. It's Marissa. Marissa was the vice president. Where am I going? Oh, I was going to turn the lights off. All right, here we go. So, when we set up a hair light, we want to basically put it so it's going straight forward, not at her, right? So we want to kind of put it out here and we're going to use the natural feather of the light to come over. Like I, you can even bring your hand if you're trying to learn it and make sure your hand stays in the light. I can see I'm right at the edge of it there. And that's what I want. So I have a little bit of light touching her. This will generally help us not get it across her face like it on her nose. It doesn't always work, but it's a good place to start. This one you want to place the center of it at her shoulders. You want that because you want it on her shoulder and down. So it's going to be a little lower than your key light. Okay, so we got this one set up. This is in our B group. I'm gonna come over here. I can actually see the modeling light. It looks beautiful. I'm gonna turn off the A light. And I'm just gonna fire the B light. Now, the thing about TTL is when you do backlit stuff like this, it almost always screws it up. But I just like to do it to get a base setting and I can always adjust. And every once in a while it does it perfectly and then I just have to like, eat my words, you know. Oh, actually, that's not bad. Okay. So this is actually not a terrible exposure for the hair light because we want it a little bit bright. I might go a little, I like it on our arm. I might raise it a tiny bit. Let's bring the first light in first or the key light, which is our big old square box. Let's see. Good. There we go. And you see now we have some separation. So we can see the difference. Now, it's a simple thing. See, and even with this box, our hair looks a little bit warm because it has a warm tone to it. So with the other one, you really get the feel. I'm going to raise it a tiny, tiny bit. Cause see how it's not quite at the top of her head? All right, so I'm just going to raise a little bit. Boop. The power is fine. Everything looks good, so I'm going to switch to manual. At this point, I'm going to switch to manual settings. That way, it will stay where it is, or it was, I should say. Now I'm going to look, and then she's, oh, I took two shots like that, like bam, with the power snap, right? Oh, and we can see that we now have nice, even light coming across, and we have a nice, clean shot. Nice and simple. It's not the most fancy light in the world, but it's good for pretty much anyone.
There's more table lamps in a, in a, in a movie than regular lamps. That could be true. Right, the, right, so you can use, if you're interested in, in a video about using uh, that kind of light, like the light that exists in the space, we could definitely talk about that, just not right this second, because that's also very relevant. So now we've got kind of a generic, simple shot. Now, this is it, it, just to give you, <laughs> I know people like this. This is where I would stand, because in, in one of, oh, I don't know why I did that. You can see me small. What you're gonna wanna do at this point is, you know, I'll do it this way as you can see. And I learned, so my first job out of college in photography was I worked for this wedding photographer. And I wanted to be a fashion photographer. And I did not, my, I was looking down my nose at that wedding photographer job, I'll tell you right now. Let me tell you, he was an amazing photographer. I learned a lot, what a, what a great photographer. But one thing that he would do is when he would shoot portraits, he was using a Hasselblad. He would always put it on a tripod, which you probably see here. And he would not do this, which is what people do, and then they kind of talk to themselves, and they're like, and the person's like uncomfortable and everything, right? What he would do is, he would do this. So, uh, where'd you go to school? Oh, what's going on over there? Oh, what's that? You know, and then he would look and talk to them, right? It's conversation. As long as your face is close to the lens, then we can interact, and she doesn't feel like she's being you know, <laughs> targeted. Now, yes, you're gonna miss some, but we have autofocus, you know, and again, we can just, we, I'm just flipping through them. Let's take a second for him to come in. Um, we'll miss some, right? But we'll be able to get shots and get communication and get an interesting shot with our subject because we're not, uh, we're not hiding, you know? Whenever I do workshops here, I always notice and I get it, believe me, I, I've been that person too. You know, you get the model there and you're just like, they're there. And you're just like. <laughs> right? There's like photographers, right? They're doing this, you know, and then like this. And it's like, and the, and the person, the subject's just like, <laughs> am I supposed to just stand here? Like, you know, you want to interact with somebody. so. I know, I know people think it slows them down even on a tripod, but I recommend it when you're, especially when you're first learning. The other way you could do it, I used to also you know this photojournalist, and he would do, I probably said this before, he, would, he didn't work on a tripod, except with big formats, but he would do exactly the same thing, but he would just hold the camera in his hand, and same thing, he'd be like, oh, you know, uh, well, oh, you're from there, oh yeah, that's cool, yeah, nice, boom, blah, 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 blah. And I'm blah, 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 because I already know Cadence, and there's really, it's, it's almost more awkward to actually have a conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you can do it that way as well. But the idea is don't hide behind your camera. The camera, in, in many cases, unless you're really setting something up that really uses the environment, the camera should be like the last thing you're thinking about. It's, it's just the device that captures the image. It's the light, it's the interaction, it's the talking to the subject that makes the photo. All right, checking notes. Smash, oh, smash that like button, thank you. Yes, please do. Oh, 106 of onset, wow, that was a long time ago. Okay, so we're cranking. We are always cranking. We're so good, you know why? I just want to get the fun stuff, the simple stuff out of the way. So again, this is really nice, right? Simple, clean, anybody, it works. Notice I didn't need a fill light. The big light source up front will compensate. And you know, and I've had this question a lot of times from people who ask about using beauty dishes with people with, let's say, less than perfect skin. So let's just take a second and talk about that. I'm not gonna use a beauty dish, but I'm just gonna talk about the angle of the light. Because <laughs> this is key, right? The way that we make shape, the way that we create form, is we create highlight and shadow, right? That's what we're looking at. That's what we're capturing. So if we take our light, what am I doing? If we take our light and we think about the angle of the light relevant, relevant to the angle that her face is mostly going to be at, right? So you notice that my light is not tipped dramatically forward, nor is it tipped back. 
it's more or less straight with a tiny bit of tip, just a little bit. And the reason why you want that is it just feels more natural to not have the light be flat. I can't exactly say why, but that's, trust me on that. So this is gonna be good for a lot of different facial positions. If we put the light closer to her, especially, and we make the angle steeper, we're gonna increase contrast. So if we have somebody who might have wrinkles or let's say deep set eyes, we don't wanna get real close with the light up high because that will make those shadows go further. What we wanna do is back the light off a little bit and make it flatter. That's really the whole trick to that. It's just a matter of angles of the, the light to the thing. And then obviously people are gonna move around, but you kind of go for the one you think is gonna work the best. And this is, becomes even more important when we get close, which is what we're about to do. Okay. I'm not even gonna change the light source because I was, so do you ever see the show Iron Chef? So, so Iron Chef is a show on, we used to be anyway, on Food Network. And one of the first like, things they had where they had the new chefs coming in, no, it wasn't Iron Chefs. He was part of Iron Chef, but this wasn't Iron Chef. It was some kind of con competition with like new chefs. And one of the first things they had to do was do like all these different cuts, like julienne and mints and blah, blah, blah. And they had all these things. And they go into the kitchen and they get these like deluxe knife sets, like 50 knives everywhere. And they're all looking at it and they're trying to figure it out. And, they're doing the thing. and then at the end, the, this is why I said Iron Chef, because he's part of Iron Chef, Morimoto, who also has a restaurant here, beautiful, great restaurant. Oh my God, what a good, <laughs> I can't afford to go there a lot, but it's a nice restaurant. He comes in at the end and he takes just one basic chef knife and he does all the cuts better than everybody else. Because the thing is that gear matters on some level. You want to have the best gear for the first thing, ideally, but you don't necessarily need it. Light is light. We can do all kinds of things with what we have. So you can't look at something and go, well, I can't do that because I don't have a beauty dish or I don't have this. We can think about what we have and use it the best we can. So I'm going to use, that's a long way of saying, I'm going to use this one light <laughs> and we're going to just move it around. We're not going to change light sources because I think that'll really demonstrate to you what we can do differently, right? So, so if you come to New York, go to his restaurant. If I'm trying to think of the name of it or if somebody knows, it's really good. It's over here on the, uh, on the, on the, was that the east side? That's the west side, I believe. Okay, so I'm going to tip the light more, right? We talked about angle. I'm gonna create more angle because Cadence has a great shape to her face. She also has good skin. So I don't have to worry too much about that. You know, so I can give a little more of a tip. That's gonna add drama. I'm also gonna move the light in. Moving it in is gonna make the shadows, again, pronounce quicker. I am tipping it more forward. So at this point I will add a sandbag. You know, after I put it right on top of her head. <laughs> well, I wanna move it with the sandbag on. That'd be too heavy. Not that strong, guys, come on. Okay. So now we have the light on there. It's tipped forward. And you can probably notice that if I were to look through my camera right now, it is, the light is blocking my camera. This is, comes down to like what I was saying before. The camera is the last thing we worry about. Let's get the light where we want it to be first, then we'll figure out the camera. It's fine, we'll make our way. We will get the camera where it needs to be, believe me. If you don't believe me where the camera is, there you go, I'll take a picture. You know, that's, that's basically where we're at right now, but that's okay. I'll, yeah, I'll get there though. <laughs> All right, so there's been many a time that my camera's been jammed under lights. So now the light's in this position. So I'm gonna come in, and we're gonna see if I can scoot past it. And if I can't, yeah, I think I can. I'm probably gonna use that grid as well, just because Yeah, okay. Okay, so right now I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. And we're gonna go and boom. Now, I left the light in manual and I was expecting that was gonna be completely blown out, but as it turns out, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> so, who knew? Okay, it's a little overexposed, but we can see, let me get a proper exposure. I'm gonna go back to TTL, we'll turn off the B light, and come in. Now we've got a light with a little bit more flavor, right? Even without the hair light, we can see that we're starting to get, I mean, the background's a little darker. She's starting to, right, we're getting this dimension, right? Bright, dark, uh, middle, right? We're getting a, a, a mix of uh, tonality, which is important. 
Hi from Germany in Paris. Nice. Oh, there you go. 104 and 106. We're in the uh, I don't know what that means. Time domain shifting. So uh, we are, back, wow, 104. That was a long time ago. Yeah, at one point, YouTube had these studios that you could use. I mean, not me, but Adorama could use on, uh, it was in Chelsea Market, which is a, also a fun place to go. And uh, they had just sets there for various like projects they were doing. And there was one that looked just like the Oval Office. So we used it. Yeah, it was super fun. Okay. That's also where I did the thing, uh, we did the thing with Joe McNally where he did an alien at a diner. <laughs> that was super fun. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the stuff they, con they hit the cutting room floor with that, shoot. Okay, I raised the light a tiny bit because I wanted to add more contrast and we can see that the light's now coming down a little bit more. Again, it's all subtlety, right? Look at the shadow, shadow. It really comes down to who you're shooting, what you want it to look like. Eventually, it will be too much of a tip and it won't look good on practically anybody. But, you know, that's all about Northern Ireland. All right. Italy, oh, we're all over the place. All right. I gotta get back to Ireland. I'm, uh, It's a beautiful place. My brother was just in Ireland, actually. I don't know where he was exactly, but he uh, he did this hike with his wife. Yeah, and it was like they every day they would like walk whatever many miles, and they meet at a place and they stay at like a bed and breakfast, and they walk more. Nice. I was like, wow, that was really nice. I mean, not the walking, but the no, <laughs> no, the whole thing looked pretty good. Yeah, exactly. So we can see that as we bring the camera in closer, we're starting to get a, a portrait that's got a little bit more drama, a little bit more shape to the face. And again, for this subject, for Cadence, who happens to be in front of my camera, this is Denmark as well. This is fantastic. There we go. Oh, there you go. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Micah. That was really fun. We had a great day hanging out with Joe. And actually, I don't know if Seth is in that at all, but that's early Seth as well, because he helped get the, the makeup artist and stuff for the alien makeup. Yeah. I don't know if he's actually in it or not. He might be like in the background somewhere. That's when he used to like to hide from the camera. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do, just to kind of mix it up a little bit, is I'm gonna actually, because I feel like it, First of all, we can do a couple things here. I like that we're going, again, this like neutral to uh, dark to gray. Now, if we want to continue this setup, actually, I just said all that, and I wasn't showing the picture. I should have been showing the picture when I did that. We'll cut that part. Let's go back. Well, I like this part that's like neutral, right, and dark, and then gray. See how we have, it's not a perfect process for, like, if you learn how to paint, that's kind of what you do, but this is not exactly right, but it's, it's because it's supposed to be bright, dark, neutral, bright, dark names. So we can make that by using our hair light and separation, or we can go with a, like a bright background. It really depends on our setup. I feel like, you know, Kins is like sophisticated. <laughs> she, you know, you know. <laughs> and for that, we want to do something a little more dramatic. So how are we gonna get the background dramatic? We can do a few things. One would be, so when I say dramatic, I mean dark, right? That's what everybody means when they say dramatic. If we want the background to be darker, we have two options. The first one is to just spin our light away from the background. That is, feather the light, right? So we'll do that first. I think with such a large box and this space in particular, this is not going to be as effective as it could be, but we'll give it a shot. Because it's always good to see. So now you can see, and keep in mind, we're not using that light in the background yet. That hair light is not on. Let me actually, let me actually turn it this way so that that way somebody jumps in, they won't be like, what is that? Yeah. Okay. Now, we can see all the surface area of this light is more or less in front of her. 
So it's gonna not hit the background as much, but it's also gonna be very much in front of her. We might lose some of the contrast that we have. So let's just see. And notice I didn't change the power or anything. I think that, yeah, the exposure is still the same. This actually looked kind of nice. You can see it worked a bit. All right, background's a little bit darker to the right here, but we did lose a little bit of the shadowing on her face, which I like, okay? So again, it comes down to what you're after. The other thing is you'll notice that this is a little bit of a gradient, okay? But if we wanna go real dark on the background, the trick here is gonna be, I mean, you could just keep swinging it and you would get darker, but you start compromising the, or your key light. I think this is where the grid comes in. So, you know, when you look and you see like, and you're like, oh, grids are so expensive. Like this is, this is the power of the grid right here. It's gonna allow us to narrow. Can I do something, knocking my camera over? I'll smack this way, is that gonna hit you? No. Okay. <laughs> It's gonna allow us to narrow our spread of light. This is 100% not the way to do this because the sandbag's on the wrong side, but that's okay. I'm on this side, so if it falls on me, it won't be that much of a loss. <laughs> so, it might be an improvement. All right. We're gonna put the grid on. Again, narrows the spread of light. So it just kind of goes on the front here with Velcro. Just like my sneakers when I was a child. <laughs> Man, I remember when Velcro sneakers became a thing. They probably still are, I guess. They still are. Yeah, and it was like, I must have been like, I mean, I wasn't that young. I was young, but not that young. Because I had already learned how to tie my shoes. And I was a little bit mad about that. I was like, really? I had to go through all this time to learn how to tie my shoes and then there's Velcro now? What a waste. So the rest of my life has been trying to make up for that time that I had to spend tying my shoes. <laughs> all right. Okay, so now I've put the grid back on and now I don't need to feather the light as much because the grid's gonna narrow the spread. So we'll put this on, that looks pretty good. And again, to a certain extent, you could use the modeling light. It's kind of bright in here, so it's not easy for me to really see it. A lot of this comes down to you, you gotta do it a bit and you'll get a feel for it. So I'll try to put it on, see if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can see it on her. It's hitting the ground a little bit. Yeah, I, I can see it hitting the background a little bit over in that corner, but I think it's gonna be so diminished that it won't be a big deal. So I am in TTL. Oh, I didn't switch the thing. Yeah, just like I thought, there is a little bit in that corner. Also, for some reason, it's out of focus. That's okay. We call that the artistic look. Now we can see how, I mean, it's a little bit more underexposed, obviously, but not really. I mean, if we look at the skin tones, it's only a smidge under, really. But it feels much darker because it's probably like half a step under. It feels much, much darker because of all the darkness around her. So, but you can see how quickly we can get the background dark with the grid. We can add that extra contrast and pump. So let me get it in focus <laughs> so we can actually have an image to work with. There we go. Okay. All right, here we go. Again, this is the TTL image. It is now, this is a little too soft. Okay, it's now in focus. I can see it's a little bit dark. So there's a few ways to do this. Like, TTL's been like right on. Philadelphia, I might be going down there in, later in the year. There's a convention called PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia. I keep, every year I try to go to it and every year something happens. All right, so one way you can check your exposure if you're not sure like what it should be, you bring something like Capture One, you can just grab your exposure slider and just start to bring it over and now, now remember, I'm only looking at her because the background will still stay relatively dark. All right, so right around there looks good skin tone wise. That's a, ooh, about two thirds of a stop. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna put it in manual. I'm gonna raise the exposure by 0.7. There we go. 
and that gives us a nice exposure on her, nice and crispy. Again, contrast. Now we're getting a higher contrast, so we can see that we definitely want the mood of the shot now to be a little bit more. Okay, so would it be a true statement that using the grid for portraiture would be more often justify a reflector fill? Uh, yes. So. Yes, that's, that's true. Like when we, when we add the grid, there's a couple of issues, right? If you want to think of it that way. If you didn't want this dramatic light, you just wanted the background to be dark. You know, now you got a problem, right? It's more dramatic than you wanted. So this is where a fill light could come in. You could use a reflector fill and with this giant box. You could probably get away with it. If you were using a little box or it was really, really close to her, you might have to use another light. But let's use a reflector. Good, good timing. Okay. This... This is a reflector. This one's silver on one side, white on the other. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Seth is commercially making these, and they look like pizza boxes. So because of that, he has slacked off on the old, we'll call this the true, you know, we live in New York, right? Like with original rays. This is the original Brooklyn reflector. And you can get them over here at, at my studio. Don't get set, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so <laughs> silver on one side, painted, white on the other. It's just a piece of foam board, obviously artisanal made in Brooklyn and we're going to come in here and remember we need to capture this light and mount it back and because our light source is so large we should be able to do it no problem if we use a little tiny light source it might be harder like a beauty dish so let's go over here all right so I'm just going to hold this in my hand like a pro not like a bro but like a pro all right, there we go. Tis filled in, maybe even a little bit too much. I may have exceeded my fill light. Uh, so if you fill in too much, you can always just back up. And there we go. So now we have different levels of contrast, drama, cleaner, and uh, somewhere in the middle. And again, why would you want to do this? Well, here in this case, I'd want to do it because I want the background dark but I, I don't want her to be so dramatic. If I wanted her to be not dramatic and I didn't care about the background, then I would just do that, which would save me a whole lot of work, right? <laughs> because I just have the one light. Oh no. They have them, they have them at the dollar store now? No, I didn't know that. The dollar store ones are a little small. It, it stinks because you can get a reflector like that for a dollar, well, a dollar 25 now, but it's like half the size but like one this big is like four dollars figure that out all right okay good so now again it comes down to what you want so let's say that we want the drama because that's where i was headed and we want to create kind of more of like a painterly look we want something a little more dramatic you know Cadence is a celebrity she's on the cover of a magazine we want something a little bit more some interview for a blog i guess this would be the modern equivalent to that right yeah. so we can now add that hair light again and now instead of just giving a little highlight it's really going to be a major player in this so let's bring this back in i'll leave the grid off of it for now you can put a grid on this too but i think for our purposes we don't want or need it you'd want to put a grid on the hair light if for instance well there's a few reasons why one might be that you don't have enough space to back it up far enough so you need to aim, aim it more at their head which is really not the way you want to do it but if you had to do that because you don't have the space that might be something to do. Another reason would be if they have especially shiny, like if they were bald, right? And the grid might help kind of kill the shine because it does uh, help a little bit with the contrast. All right, so I'm just gonna turn the model light on again so I can show you guys. So we can see it's hitting her hair, that's good. All right. I think, oh yeah, I didn't change the power, but it should be fine. Okay, and now we can see we're starting to come around. I actually want this to be even more dramatic, I think. Because some of that uh, model, you know what? I think I am going to use the grid. I'm using the grid. We got a grid. We're going to use it. The reason why I want to use a grid here is not so much uh, because I need to control where it falls on her. In fact, I'm going to have to point it more at her than I normally would. It's because I want to, uh, it's bouncing around too much in the space. I mean, I have a white space, right? So. The light is going all over the place and it's giving us too much light in the background. 
So we're going to throw this grid on. That'll help a little bit with where exactly the light falls. And I think, I think these pair of snaps come with these grids. I don't quote me on that. I think some of them come with grids anyways, which is very nice. I'm like the Parasnap salesman now. Buy Glow Parasnaps. GI Glow. Easy to use. They're super good. I mean, I, I, I'm impressed. I, I don't love how cool the light is that comes out of them compared to my other lights, like when I'm using them together, so I have to be a little cautious. But other than that, I'm very satisfied. If you just get to go with these, you're in good, space, good shape. Okay. So I'm, just, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to take a shot. That's usually a good idea when you first start things. Okay, yep, just what I thought was gonna happen. So we see it's less light, obviously. So we're gonna turn it up. How much does a grid eat? Maybe a stop. It really depends on how the light's aimed, really. If you're feathering the light, maybe a stop. If you are aiming it directly, maybe a half stop. Okay, there we go, that's pretty good. I kinda want the background even darker. All right, so I'm gonna combine the techniques here. I'm gonna spin this gridded light here. I'm also gonna move it a smidge closer to her. Okay. So we're doing a little tweaking at this point because now we're trying to shape our light. Now we have our portrait subject there. We've got the simple shot. She's like, oh, that's not, you know, the worst shot I've ever had of me in my life. So now we can kind of move on <laughs> and try to, <laughs> You know, try to, uh, it's, not shot it's not the worst shot ever. There was this guy on Craigslist that was, you know. Oh, <laughs> okay, so I gotta adjust my power and stuff again. All right, so background is darker again. Oh yeah, it's wrapping nicely. Okay, so I kind of like the, I, it, normally I try to avoid the light hitting the cheek, but you can see it actually doesn't look bad in this. And that's because of the exposure and all the saturation that's going on. This is a very highly saturated image. So what I'm gonna do here is I got a couple of issues which I will solve. One is that it's a little bright here in her nose, but the rest of it looks fine. So I'm actually gonna turn the, weirdly I'm gonna turn the power up even though it's bright there and I'm just gonna redirect the light slightly. So A, I'm gonna turn the light up three tenths and then I'm just actually going to back it up. So, I kept it in the same spot, but I moved it just slightly further away from her. Because remember that highlights are just a reflection of the light source. So if we move where the light source is and how your skin sees it, we see how much nicer that is, right? See how much nicer that is on your skin? Yeah, that's pretty nice. Now we're creating a dramatic portrait more suitable to the subject I happen to have in front of me. <clears throat> Oh, it does not come with the grid. Ah, bummer. <clears throat> come on, Adorama. Give them a free grid if they're watching this. Tell them that you want a free grid because you watched it here on, on set. <laughs> They'll come after me. They'll be charging me for grids. All right. I think we're good. All right, any questions? Maybe I'm not missing anything. Canada. Oh, Canada. <laughs> Right, four shoots, okay, Italy. They don't have Walmart. Oh no, they don't have foam board in, in uh, Italy? They must have foam board in Italy. You probably might call it something else. If you can't, if the place where I would look for it, the place to look for foam board if you can't find it or something you can use is in an art supply store. It's just that things like Walmart here, I guess, uh, we don't have Walmart. There's a, I think there's a Kmart in the city somewhere, but uh, Dollar Store, they have like an art section. So if you, if you don't have like those big chain stores, look to like an art store, like a local art store. You should be able to find foam board. Okay. Because you know what it's used for, what it's actually for <laughs> is uh, mounting fo like photos or whatever, or, or paintings, I suppose, or posters. It's what goes around, but it's like thicker. It goes behind usually in the mat board in the front. Okay. I feel like we got this where we want it. Questions? All 
I, right, I did not like using a grid on the hair light. And the reason why I changed it was because I, the background, basically. You know, a lot of what you're doing, oh, you're not looking at the picture, you're looking at me. A lot of what you're doing when you're making a portrait or doing any kind of photography is making a whole lot of compromises. I mean, you can sit there all day and use all different things. I could, if I really wanted the background to be black, I could go set up a black background. But a lot of times during these live streams, especially, I try to keep it loose because you can't always do that, right? You can't always be somewhere and be like, I need this and be like, well, I don't have it. So I guess I can't do the shoot. So I try to give you options that can work. I put that on, it limited it a little bit, but in fact, it actually worked pretty well. It just makes it so I have to kind of angle it a little closer to her, but I didn't mind it on her cheek like I normally would. In fact, I might even overdo it. I'm gonna actually spin it a little, I'm gonna do exactly what I said I don't normally do, because don't normally do, do doesn't mean never do. <laughs> and I'm gonna actually aim it at her a bit more. See if we can get a little bit on her cheek, but not too much. Now let's actually do a couple things. Have you go here, yeah. Then also have you go this way a little bit. Yeah. So I shot three. Oh, well, light's in the shot. Oh yeah, see? On her face, actually, I mean, not on her nose, I don't love that, but on the side of her face, I actually kind of like it. So if you could, if we get the right area, like here, is actually kind of cool. It adds definitely a flavor to it, right? It has almost, I mean, if the grid wasn't in the shot. Let's take that out. We'll just take that out quickly. Nobody will know any different. All right, right. It adds a little bit more dimensionality, right? It adds like a little bit of a, a like almost like a set. Well, she's in a location as opposed to this, which feels a little more like portrait like. So we can basically go either way and it can definitely work. In fact, you can do it from both sides and you have like this really super over the top trauma. A snoot, never <laughs> late as usual, Jack. <laughs> Okay, so I wouldn't use a snoot for a hair light because, and again, I wouldn't use a snoot for a hair light because it's going to limit where it falls. What I want with a hair light is, and this is a perfect example, is I want the light to light from the top of her hair all the way down to her shoulder. And you're not going to get that with a snoot, you know. The other thing is, even this one where it's more soft, the other thing is, if you use a hard light source, let's say a magnum reflector or whatever, if you, even if you want to spread, what you're gonna get is less detail in your highlight, a more specular highlight. So this is diffused on her shirt and stuff and on the side of her face because we're shooting through a soft box which has two layers of diffusion. If that was a hard light source, like a snoot, it would, it would be just blown out. It just wouldn't be what I'd want. It might be cool for some stuff. Let's try to do that one with your face this way a little bit again. I'm gonna do a couple of things here. I'm going to turn the monolite lights on so I can see it. This is one of the advantages of monolite lights. Turn your face this way a little bit. Right there. Good. Yeah. Like, so you can see how I can actually have it touching her face and it still looks. And even here where it's throwing a shadow from her hair, it doesn't look terrible. Although I don't love that, to be honest. We have almost a Rembrandt feel going on there. Let me actually do this. Now I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I'm doing the thing I don't do. One of the, my kind of philosophies in life is that if I find something that I don't like, like, and I don't really know why I don't like it, I will actually just do it because I want to know why. And sometimes I end up not uh, disliking as much as I thought. But here I knew why. I was just trying to. But, but that is something, it's a good way to think about things, I think. So there you go. That's a powerful celebrity style shot, right? No? Yeah. I love this green dress too. It's like it really takes the light well. It's very rich and flavorful, like a bold cup of soup. <laughs> Not to be a pain, but couldn't a snoot from overhead firing just off of straight down, give the desired effect that no, because the problem with the hair light is that, right, the shadow is going to be, uh, that, okay, so, the, uh, Rembrandt, I know he is. 
Okay, so I don't have a snoot to demonstrate this. So you, you, you go ahead and do it. Like I, I do it so you can see. Don't just trust what I say. Basically, if you use a small, right, specular, because that's what a snoot's going to be, right? So it's going to be hard. It's going to be specular. Two things are going to happen. The purpose of a snoot is to have a small area of light. If we shoot it on the side of her hair or on the top of her head or wherever you want to do it, what's going to happen is it's only going to light a small area. It's not going to light her whole, number one, her whole uh, head unless you back it up really far. And if you back it up really far, then why are you using a snoot? Okay, that's number one. Number two, you, I used to hear this all the time about grids too, people like hard grids. People were always like, I use grids for hair lights. Like, really, you have like a spot on the side of their head? The other thing is that you, uh, a hard light, in other words, a specular, I should say a specular light, I'm sorry, hard was what I was talking about. A specular light is going to blow out more which means that if it does touch her skin or it does touch something shiny, like a lot of people's hair is shiny or her, her dress is shiny, you won't get uh, detail. It'll blow out. You'll get basically no detail because you're using a specular light. Remember that a highlight is the reflection of the light source. So the reflection of the gridded softbox is what's making the beautiful long light down her shoulder. A, a, again, a, a small, hard specular light is going to just reflect a small hard specular light right so that's why it's not great go stand in the sun you know in the middle of the day where it's like blasting on top of your head it doesn't look good you know now at the end of the day when it's going through some clouds or it's being diffused beautiful hair light right but that's a whole different situation like if you hit it behind her you could do that real dramatic fire starter hair but we're not going to go there today <laughs> anyways i'll try it i want i want you guys to try it try it and tweet at me that's what we'll say Easy go sauce, suspects. Flavor, strawberry. <laughs> awesome. I'm hungry. Yes, I am. All right, so let's show the beautiful picture of Cadence again for a second while I look at this. Uh, I am hungry. <laughs> strawberry. Is it possible to add a light to the background and get a more gradient gray? Yes, it is. I'm not going to do that, but um, only because I'm running out of time and I don't have another light set up. But 100%, if you wanted a gradient on the background, you could just put a light over there. If you wanted the gradient to be smooth and soft, you would use a soft box, possibly with a grid. If you wanted the gradient to be kind of like a blast in one corner, then drop down, you could use a hard light, just tar target in the corner. Possibly a snoot, right? Yeah. What I generally do is if I'm gonna gradiate the background, I try to put the brightest part of the gradient. Uh, if, it's, if it's a gradient, like a soft gradient, I'll put it on the opposite side of the highlight. If it's a blast gradient, I usually put it on the same side of the highlight, the hair light that is. It just feels more natural. But again, play around with it, see what works for you. If you have not already, please do like this video. Hit the thumbs up, press the, the like button, the hearts, whatever you call it. Ring the bells. <laughs> Ring the bells, subscribe to the channel that keeps us here. I, um, there's a new channel, Adorama Events uh, on YouTube. Check it out, they do more kind of the ones I've seen anyways, although I just saw one on different angles of light, so check it out. It was a short one, but uh, they, uh, they mostly do kind of presentation type uh, things as opposed to me standing here talking to you. Um, but they're a little more long form, so check those out, kind of classroom-ish, if you will. Uh, I've been enjoying them when I've been watching them. They don't have much content on the channel yet, but it's growing. Also, check out uh, Cadence, Cadence Frank on Instagram, and me, Daniel Norton. Daniel Norton Photographer, wherever you go. Take pictures with the snoot as a hair light or whatever you like and tweet at me or Instagram me and I'd love to see what you create with it. You know, show me what you can do because just because somebody stands here and says, I've done photography for so long and this is how you should do it, doesn't mean it's right. So you do what's right for you, go at it, make some awesome pictures and see now this is where it's nice to have Seth because he would just like go to the closer but now I have to awkwardly walk over. So pretend like that was all dramatic and then like music is playing and I'm gonna go press the thing. <laughs> We'll see you next time. I'm looking for the graphics. There it is.